Hello, my name is Jim Cracchiolo, and I'm the director at Learning Your Function Incorporated, also known as Life Inc. Today, we're going to have one of my favorite presentations, our Engage presentation. What's exciting about Engage is you won't get it anywhere else. It's something that was made in-house by Amy Cracchiolo, my wife, and myself, both directors and founders of Learning Your Function Incorporated. It is what we believe to be the most essential building blocks of success as a classroom teacher, as a resource specialist, as a campus director, as anybody at Life Inc. You will be the most successful if you are able to understand and harness the potential of engage, E-N-G-A-G-E. -E. We're gonna find out what it means right now. I'm gonna share my screen with you. And we're gonna learn what it is to engage our students. So, like I mentioned before, this is one of my favorite trainings because my wife and I developed it um, and it's something that we truly believe in. It's something that if you truly believe in, you'll have the most success in your classroom as you possibly can. Um, E-N-G-A-G-E, -E, engage, not only on the surface level, talks about what we do um, for individuals with disabilities at our programs to engage them in daily activities, but how to do that. And through the process of engage, you'll learn how to do that. And like it says at the bottom, it's really the only thing you have to do. So we're going to find out what all that means right now. Engage stands for six different items. Um, in your classrooms, you will see a poster that spells out what engage means. That's supposed to be a constant reminder to you. Um, if things are going well in your class, you can look to the engage poster and you can say, this is why they're going well, because we are able to engage students based on these principles, these six principles. If things aren't going so well in your class, you can look at that poster and you can see, say, this is why I'm struggling right now in engaging my students. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, worldwide kind of process for what we do in the classroom. Um, it will work for any question that you have and it will answer that relatively quickly. So um, E, the most topical, most surface level thing that we do for individuals with disabilities on a daily basis is provide them with expectations. The E in engage stands for expectations provided for each individual. And we'll go into what that means in future slides. N, noticing students' needs. We obviously work with a special needs population and they have needs. And in order to engage them properly, we need to notice those needs. G, being goal focused. It's, it's being focused in general is good. And when we're focused on the goals of the individuals that we serve and the goals that we have as a community, we'll have success and we will engage individuals. A, activities prepared and implemented. Uh, sometimes one of the more difficult pieces that we talk to teachers about being successful with, but activities being prepared and implemented allows you to proactively prepare and have the pieces, the essentials of what we need, the curriculum that we uh, address for our students. It allows it to be disseminated in a way that you won't have the hurdles or hiccups if, if, that if you didn't prepare. G, generating safety, always important. And one of the uh, biggest indicators of engagement breakdown, if we're not able to be safe in the environments that we teach in. So generating safety is extremely important for everybody at Life Inc. And our foundational piece, the most essential piece to what we attempt to do on a daily basis, to emphasize independence. We work with a variety of students on a spectrum of, of, of levels. And basically, no matter what the skill might be, our goal is to increase the independence that a person has in order to be successful. So that is our goal here today is to go through the six parts of engage. And uh, through that, we will start off with E. At a very basic level, each person in each classroom comes to Life, Inc., and it has the expectation for expectations. They don't come into class each day to sit there. 
to stare, to even do things that they can do off campus, like watch a TV or play on a tablet. Those are not the expectations that we provide for each individuals at Life Inc. So what you have to do is understand that it is your most surface level responsibility to provide these expectations to a variety of students in your classroom. We obviously have different classrooms and between those different classrooms, we have different expectations. The different individuals sometimes within a room have different expectations. Some might have a uh, larger attention span. Some might have um, a greater knowledge of reading or math. Um, some might have a greater ability of mobility. So we need to understand what those expectations are before each one of our students arrive each day so that we can provide those expectations and so that we can have some success throughout the day with our students. Some of those uh, responsibilities and expectations through differ at the different levels that we serve. We serve a group at the therapeutic level, the supported level, and the independent or employability level. So our goals for these different students are very different in the different classrooms that we serve. A therapeutic student is an individual that is learning the most basic life skills. And when I say the most basic life skills, you might think to yourself, basic life skills, but I mean the most basic life skills. That is transitioning from place to place, sometimes using the restroom or eating. Um, you know, those are the individuals that are going to need the most assistance and supervision in all of the things that we do. We don't consider those students low functioning. A lot of people will use those terms, low functioning or high functioning. An individual is not low functioning. An individual is at the therapeutic support level. And that means that they require the most attention to um, those most basic areas of um, self-care. A supported level student is going to be an individual that while we push for independence will most likely need support in the variety of expectations that we provide for them. That could be a, a weaning off of expectation. It could be something as simple as a visual, verbal, or auditory prompt. But the support that we provide them are going is going to allow them to be successful ultimately. And that is our goal. Some of those individuals at the supported level will have some basic elementary understanding. And one of the biggest differences between our individuals at the therapeutic and supported levels will be their ability to verbally express their wants and needs. And when I, when I say that, I should have said communicate their wants and needs. Some individuals do that verbally and some individuals do it not verbally um, through a variety of different um, augmentative or alternative communications. So whether the person is speaking, signing, gesturing, or using visuals, um, they might be at the supported level if they're able to communicate more effectively than a therapeutic level student. Then we have our individuals at the independent level. Those individuals, we are pushing out of the nest in some way, shape, or form. Our goal is to push them a little bit more independently in either more of those living independently, those independent living situations, or uh, more independent in those career-based or vocation-based or volunteer-based scenarios through activities like on-the-job training and different functional academics. Individuals at the independent level will be pushed to be more independent because our goal for them and everybody at Life Inc. is to be as independent as possible, as, as possible as that individual can be. Going along with expectations provided for each individual, the E and engage, we have to remember our schedules, both daily and weekly. It's very important for your classroom to have a worthwhile schedule, one that attends to the student's needs and abilities. Um, a schedule can involve things like restroom breaks and lunchtime and outdoor times, okay? We're going to learn a little bit about curriculum later. And so there's great ways to integrate that curriculum into your daily and weekly schedule. But you should know your daily and weekly schedule as soon as possible. You should really stick to it for the student's benefit as they will start understanding what the expectations provided are, not just with an assignment 
or um, a, a project. They'll understand what the expectation is um, going to and fro. They'll understand the expectations of sitting or being in a specific environment for that time of day. So that's very important to adhere to a schedule um, for your students' benefit. And basically, at the end of the day, you should be able to name the expectations that you had for each individual in your classroom. If you think back after a day's work and you have a hard time remembering what those expectations were for those students, then we weren't providing either enough expectations or clear enough ones. If you don't remember it, there's a great chance that your students don't remember it either. We're moving on to the end in engage, and that is noticing students' needs. It's very, very important, based on the fact that we're working with individuals with disabilities, that we understand that our students typically won't be able to complete an expectation without some type of accommodation or modification on our part. It's very important that we put this forward so that they can be a part of the expectation, but also so that they learn from it and potentially build from that, maybe not needing that expectation, or I'm sorry, that accommodation for the remainder of their time here. It's very important to make them, again, as independent as possible and noticing their needs as early in the process of providing an expectation as possible will help with that. So overall, if you don't recognize student needs, they cannot properly meet the expectations. So right off the bat, if you have a reading assignment for a student and they cannot read, then we have an issue. It doesn't mean that they are excommunicated from that expectation or that they, that they don't have to partake in it. What it means is that they need a modification or an accommodation. Okay, an individual can follow along if they have a visual example of a reading assignment. If they're able to understand what's going on in the, in the visual aspects or maybe even an auditory explanation of that reading assignment, if they're able to have that, then chances are they'll be able to keep along with the group. Um, that's just one example, but many, many, many examples to follow. When student needs are met, they can perform and meet provided expectations. I like to break this up as well into a couple different uh, topics, and you'll see this throughout the presentation, that we have needs in the mobility areas, okay? So that's an individual that might be physically impaired. The mobility areas, the cognitive, okay, or, or, or um, the cognitive areas, or the behavioral areas. So those modifications um, in those three areas are typically the ones that you will be making so that you can notice your student needs and you can apply some change so that they can be a part of the expectations that you provide. Uh, behavior and health needs should always be considered but not used in an excuse. I'll give you an example. Um, some of the individuals, I've seen this before, uh, not, a, not one of the happy times in my life, but um, there'll be an activity in uh, a kitchen area. And it's more difficult to take those individuals who are in um, behavioral classrooms into the kitchen and to cook. And so a lot of times teachers will say, well, my students can't cook because behaviorally they might be food aggressive. They might be um, wanting to try the things prematurely before they're cooked. They cannot participate because they are food aggressive. Well, I would fight that. And I would say that there are ways to involve them in cooking so that we can, um, you know, uh, hurdle that, 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 that situation. We can, we can um, make a person work towards the goal of being less food aggressive because an individual who wants food needs to be able to cook food so that they can enjoy food. And that delayed gratification, teaching them that through a variety of different behavioral expectations is possible. Another cooking example might be um, a health need, might be a mobility situation. So an individual that whose wheelchair doesn't fit in the kitchen can't cook. And so they sit outside watching everybody else from the doorway while everybody else cooks. There are ways that cooking can come outside of a kitchen so that an individual in a wheelchair can uh, participate. And we'll see that in just a minute in a picture. Um, needs, when needs are met, students are included 
and therefore engaged. And when we don't meet the needs of our students, they cannot fully be engaged uh, or engaged to the greatest potential uh, that they have. So we need to make sure that we involve all students in the, in the different expectations that we have through curriculum, through uh, all, all activities, and we do that. And when you have questions about that, please do not be afraid to ask your resource, your uh, campus directors, and your um, directors like me and Ms. Amy and Ms. Natalie. We can see these pictures real quick, very simple um, activities here that, we, that we're doing. I'm gonna point to a couple of them that, that make it real obvious, but you can uh, imagine the rest in your upper right-hand corner. We have an individual who is visually impaired. The individual is doing an activity, um, multiple choice. It is on a whiteboard and you can see the contrast between dark and light. Um, it's obviously a lot larger because it's on the projector, not on a piece of paper. But this individual is able to participate because he has something that he can see that's large enough. Just because he's visually impaired doesn't mean it means that he can't see the paper and the and the, and, the, and the words on the paper. But he could see something and choose something from the multiple choice answers if it's large on the board, visually represented, and has that contrast between dark and light. So we did that for that student, and that was very beneficial. The young lady on the bottom left hand corner is an individual in a wheelchair. It's very, very difficult for her to participate in a cooking activity that involves the stove. So what we did was we brought the stove to her. Okay, this is the modification that we were able to make very simply. And as you can see, she's very independent in the process. There's no other students around her, no other staff helping her. She's able to do those things if we can give her access uh, from a physical standpoint. So that's great. A lot of the other pictures, you might see different prompts. You might see um, some different manipulatives on the table. And those are all things to help a student uh, participate and therefore be engaged in an activity. We're going to move along to G in engaged. That's goal focused. Um, this is one of the higher order thinking processes of engage. Uh, you can provide expectations all day, but unless they're directed uh, and they are goal focused, your students are going to not truly engage and not truly learn from the engaging activities and expectations that you have for them. So I'll give you a quick scenario. We have a classroom that learns um, in the course of a week, five different things. On Monday, they learn laundry. On Tuesday, they learn how to do money math. On Wednesday, they go to the movies. Uh, on Thursday, they uh, learn how to um, do some reading comprehension uh, on a literacy book. And on Friday, what they do is they do an art project um, that is about um, the uh, Greek temples and, and Greek mythology. So that was one week. That was week A. Now we have week B. Um, on week B, we focus on not five different things. We focus on one thing five times. So we focus on the laundry like we did on Monday of the previous week. So on Monday, we focus on the separation of the colored laundry and the white laundry. That's all we focus on on Monday. On Tuesday, we review the colored and white separation. And we also talk about um, how to use a, a washing machine and a dryer. On Wednesday, we review separation, the machines, and we actually go and do it at a laundry machine that we have on campus. Then on Thursday, what we do is we review all of those things. We throw a load of laundry in, but then when it gets out of the dryer, we also learn how to fold the laundry. And last but not least on Friday, we do all of the things that we learned in the previous uh, four days. That is separating all the laundry, that is uh, working the washing machine and the dryer, that is folding. And now on Friday, we're gonna learn how to iron some of the items that we take out of the dryer, okay? What, which week, week A, the five different things, or week B, the repetition of the same subject, does a student learn better? There's no question that the second week was goal focused. We had a goal and that was to do the laundry. The students in that classroom learned more about the laundry, maybe not all at the same level, but they all learned 
how to do the laundry in such a way that they could do it at a, a, a repetition. They over and over for those five days, they could export parts of doing the laundry, if not the entire situation. So it's very, very important to be goal focused and to understand that. We do that through our curriculum areas. So every month you will receive an email that outlines the different curriculum that we are providing. So there'll be topics in the following areas, functional academics, literacy, health and competition, faith and character, cooking and self-determination. All of those areas will have topics of discussion and uh, activities linked to them that you could utilize in your classroom. There's always more than you could do in a month, but pick and choose. And if you'd like to create your own in those topics, we like to make this a uniform item across all campuses. That is the four campuses at Life and Cas across the Tampa Bay area. Understanding that you will have differences in accommodations and modifications to the variety of students. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Content versus context. All of the things that we're talking, all those red dots that you see on your screen, starting with functional academics and ending with self-determination is content. All of the topics within that is content. The content across all campuses and all classrooms, we expect to be the same over the course of a month. The content is the same. If the functional academic of the month is the laundry, we expect every classroom to have interaction with the laundry and, and lessons and activities within that, 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 uh, that lesson, that uh, area, and the content to be the same. Now, we totally expect the context in which that is presented to be different. I'll give you an example. The context of using the laundry as a functional academic in an independent level class might look different than a therapeutic level class. We just talked about the week of lessons for laundry, okay? And we talked about how goal-focused it was. Well, if we do that same scenario for an independent level class, doing some a little bit different for the therapeutic level class, they probably won't get to ironing. They might not even get to folding, but they will definitely get to separating the laundry by color. That is something that all of our therapeutic students should be exposed to, might need some help with, might be able to do it, and they should be given the opportunity to try. And there's a lot of different activities that you can do to showcase that skill and, and test it. So separating the laundry and then using the laundry machine, turning it on, going and collecting it, placing the items into the different areas. That might be the extent to which a therapeutic level student is able to achieve success with in the topic of laundry. And that's okay. The context is different between a therapeutic classroom and an independent level classroom. So let's continue. Each month, having a goal for each curriculum subject. If you within your classroom have a goal, we have obviously that email that's sent to you. And each topic of our curriculum has a topic assigned to it. Again, I'll use the topic of functional academics and laundry. Literacy, you'll have a book that, that, that coincides with that curriculum. What I'm going to tell you is for your classroom and sometimes even for your individual students, Having a goal for each curriculum subject will make that month the best possible month. You will have better expectations. You will be able to address those student needs as we just talked about, and your classroom will be super goal-focused, both on a classroom level and an individual level. Fewer reasonable goals are more readily attained. So what does that mean? Don't create tons and tons of goals. Having a very specific goal, if for a student during functional academics and, and the laundry scenario, maybe their only goal is to separate whites and colors. That's something that could be practiced 15, 20, 30 more times over the course of a month. At the end of that month, the individual should have a good understanding of that. If that is the goal for that level student, Fantastic. Maybe for an, independ an independent level student, the goal is for them to fold clothes 
maybe shirts and shorts, or maybe just towels. So having that goal for those individuals in those classrooms are extremely important. Now, last but not least, again, a goal-focused classroom will equal tangible student growth. Your students will be engaged and they will have their goals met. This one's another one of those tough ones for people because it requires you to be proactive. You have to be able to do things before they are due. Yes, you come in on a Monday and you're expected to have expectations for your students. If you prepare your activities, you're able to implement them. And the A in engage stands for activities prepared and implemented. It's extremely important to plan your day before your day begins. If you're coming in on that Monday and you're starting to plan your day, you're late. The reason why is because your students are ready. They are ready and waiting to be engaged. If you're not ready to provide them with that engagement through expectations, through the, the, the modifications that they might need in order to participate, then they are going to not be engaged. They're going to be disengaged. So planning the week ahead of time and not the morning of is extremely important to gather or request materials. If you're lacking something and you come to that, maybe you need paper plates for an activity that you're gonna be doing uh, that pertains to healthy eating. If you do not request those materials in advance, what's to say that we don't have the paper plates that you need? So make sure that you have those items prepared so that they can be implemented. And utilizing resources. Maybe you need an extra set of hands for the activity that you're doing. Maybe you need a piece of technology that we have access to, a tablet or a computer. Maybe you have some pre-made curriculum that you need to print out or you need to cut before the students participate in the activity. Let's not do that the morning of. Let's not do that five minutes before. Let's do that the week before so that our activities can be prepared. Six hours are within your current schedule that are good hours to utilize for preparation. We service individuals from 8.30 to 2.30, Monday through Friday. If you take the remainder of time that you are paid throughout the week, that is 8 to 8.30 and 2.30 to 3 each day. If you add an extra hour on a Friday, as we have a Fun Friday movie planned every Friday at 1 o'clock, that's six hours that you are paid to prepare for the next week. And for most classrooms, that's two staff. So that's really 12 man hours that you have to prepare your activities so that they can be implemented in a timely fashion. When prepared to teach, you are reducing the need for unnecessary intervention. If you're not ready, your students will know that and they will act accordingly. If you are prepared, your students will know that and they will act accordingly. So make sure that you're prepared so that you don't have behavior issues that pop up in your classrooms. Being prepared is always the best way to engage your students. It's extremely important to generate safety in your environment, both in the classroom and outside of it, during your school day. I will say that if Safety is not a priority in your classroom. It has the greatest potential to break down the greatest uh, level of engagement. What does that mean? If an individual, say your classroom has a lot of backpacks on the ground, that you don't have a specific place where those backpacks go and students don't understand that expectation, well, a student could trip over one of those backpacks. And if a student trips in such a way and hurts their nose, starts bleeding, Engagement just stopped for the entirety of your class, not just because students are interested in what's happening to that student, but because you have to tend to that student and you have to stop what you're doing, even if you prepare that activity. Safety is one of the most foundational pieces that we must provide to our students. If we don't have safety, we do not have engagement. It's important throughout your day to keep track of your students. Know at the beginning of the day how many students are in attendance and count, count often 
whenever you leave the class or whenever you enter the class or whenever you get to the part, the, 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 the environment that you're transitioning to, whether that's outside or a different room to the lunchroom or to the gymnasium, whatever it might be, count heads before, during, and after every activity you do. I always use the term locomotive and caboose. Whenever you um, leave a classroom, have either a teacher or a very, very responsible student be a locomotive and a caboose. That's the front and the back of your line. So you know that everybody in the middle made it to where they're going. Looking at the geography of your classroom, maybe it's set up in such a way that doesn't generate safety. Are there tripping hazards? Are there items in your classroom that are desired by your students that they're going to try to access in unsafe ways? It's very, very important to set up your classroom uh, proactively so that you do not have issues with safety. And basically, when safety is not generated, engagement breakdown is inevitable. There's no question that it will be the greatest level of disengagement that you will have compared to anything else. If you don't notice a student's needs, that one student will be disengaged. If you don't proactively generate safety, then none of your students will be able to be engaged. Last but not least, and the most important aspect of Engage is emphasizing independence. It's our second E, and it's extremely important. Our goal is to make students as independent as possible, no matter what their level is. All the things that we do, we are attempting to make our students more independent in some way. That could be something as simple as using the restroom, tying a shoe, using math to complete um, a budget for their for their own personal uh, expenses, or to go to Wendy's and order a Frosty. It can be any of those things, but for an individual to be more independent in some way, shape, or form is truly our goal. In order to grow in independence, students must be engaged. If you don't provide expectations, if you don't generate safety, if you don't notice their needs and have your activities prepared and implemented, and last but not least, if your students aren't goal-focused, you won't be able to emphasize independence and in what it is that you do. If you are doing all those things, your students will become more independent and therefore making your day far easier. It's very, very important and something that I'll tell people sometimes. Our goal is to put ourselves out of a job. If all of our students, which would be very difficult, but if all of our students were as independent as they as 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 me and you, then we wouldn't have an adult day training to manage. Now, a lot of our students sometimes lack the ability to be as independent as possible in certain areas. It is our goal to make them as independent as possible in as many areas as we can, and truly never miss an opportunity to create student success, growth, and independence. This is our number one venture and mission within Life Inc. We educate and advocate for students with disabilities so that they can live more fulfilling lives as independent people. Just a quick recap um, E N G A G E is what we're talking about. Engage. It's all you need in order to be successful. This is going to be on your comprehension check. It's very, very important, again, as one of our most important uh, presentations to know what engage means and to practice it. And when you're lacking in an aspect of engage, to correct it and then ask also on how you can correct it if you're running into difficulty. Expectations provided for each individual. Have something ready for your students at all times during the day, even if it's and a, a structured downtime. Make sure that there's expectations in place. Noticing student new needs, our individuals have disabilities, and we know that. Make sure that we're accommodating those things when we provide expectations. Goal-focused. Make sure those expectations have a purpose. Make them goal-focused. Activities prepared and implemented. Be proactive. Don't wait until the last minute to make an activity for your students. Have those things ready 
so that they can be engaged throughout the day. Generating safety, make sure that you have safe environments that you are uh, bringing your students to each and every day, whether it's your classroom or outdoors. If it's not a safe environment, do not expose the students to it. And last but not least, our most foundational area is emphasizing independence. Make sure that your students know that they have an ability to be more independent in some way, shape, or form and get them there. I believe that is the last slide for this portion of Engage. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. I'm super excited to share it with you. Like I had mentioned before, um, it is our goal to engage each and every student each and every day that they attend Learning Your Function Incorporated. It was me and my wife's intention to leave the school system so that we could better engage students and be part of a team that puts that as the number one priority in their lives. So overall, I hope you had a good time learning about Engage. If you have any questions, as always, ask your campus director, myself, Miss Natalie, or Miss Amy, and we'll be sure to answer your questions and get you engaging. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.